All right, hey, what's up, everybody? Mike Lindsley here with you. We are at the Burton Diner on a Saturday morning. I got up early today, and I worked out like crazy, and I said, I'm really hungry, so where am I going to go? The Burton Diner, of course. Two scrambled eggs, bacon, and a piece of wheat toast. Delicious, as always. You can get a lot of their hash entrees, as well as the famous Burton Benedict, which is on Texas toast with the bacon gravy over. Uh, a couple of over-easy eggs. I would add ham to that to make it a little bit more like a Benedict, and, of course, uh, try all their lunch items uh, as well. I want to get into the... Uh, a Syracuse game last night uh, over Louisville. Uh, I thought it was a pretty electric atmosphere in the Carrier Dome, although I thought that they really could have packed the place uh, a little bit more. I was very disappointed when I got there to see a lot of the corners of the Carrier Dome just completely empty. I know that the attendance had said 42,000 plus. Um, you know, nearly 43,000, but uh, the reality of the situation is, uh, in my opinion, and again, I don't tell people how to spend their money, but there are a lot of fans out there in central New York, and I know who they are because they used to call my radio shows. They reach me on social media. I'm not going until they win again. Well, they're winning again. They're number 13 in the country, and last night would have been the night for all those people to get the hell out of the house, go up to the Carrier Dome, spend 35, 40 bucks on a ticket, and go to the game and support Syracuse, the 13th ranked team in the country. They could be top 10, depending on how uh, some of the teams do today. If some teams lose, you could see Syracuse actually crack the top 10. A couple of takeaways from last night, though. Number one, absolutely positively, was Louisville was so bad. I mean, this team, it's amazing in two years what's happened to them, and I think what's happening now is you're seeing the dwindling of a lot of the recruits and a lot of the skill and speed uh, you know, at an NFL level, of course, because Louisville was pumping pros uh, 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 right to the NFL every single year. And it went back to Charlie Strong and his amazing recruiting in the state of Florida. Now Louisville can't even get out of its own way. I mean, they can't even, they, they don't have any players to do anything. They can't even get chunk yardage. The turnovers are unbelievable. In Syracuse, I thought defensively was unbelievable again. I, I mean, again, I will point out that even though Louisville is really, really bad, Syracuse took care of business. I mean, they won this game handily. This game was over. Uh, you know, in the second quarter. Uh, but the defense was unreal. Alton Robinson and Chris Slayton and these guys up front have been absolutely terrific. And, um, you know, I, I think that defensively, I, I had an idea that if Syracuse came out and started scoring, uh, of course, they got the ball um, off of three and out to start the game. And then Sean Riley fumbled the punt. And then, of course, Syracuse had to, you know, the defense had to come up big again to finally get the offense the ball again, and then things really, really got going. Um, but, but I think what you're looking at uh, with this defense is, you know, it's very opportunistic. And all I was looking for was Syracuse to get the offense going uh, quite a bit in the beginning. And then from there, the defense could really pressure Louisville, make them throw into spots. You saw that with a couple of interceptions as well, uh, and, and or a couple of turnovers, including a, a, an interception that was thrown, you know, right to the Syracuse secondary. So uh, those were some of the, the the big things on defense, on offense. I'm telling you, man, they didn't even have to throw three, four hundred yards in this game because the short field, the penalties the turnovers, uh, and then obviously you had the situation where Mo Neal was out of his mind running for well over 100 yards. And uh, this is just an incredible, incredible moment uh, for Syracuse football right now at 8-2 uh, to be going into, in my opinion, the biggest game probably for Syracuse football in maybe 16, 17, 18 years. They're going to play Notre Dame in New York at Yankee Stadium next Saturday. That game is a 2.30 start, uh, and I can't wait for it. And I think they have a legit chance to win this game. Now, here's the issue. Notre Dame runs the football like crazy. Syracuse's run defense is not as good as the pass defense. Very nervous about the last two games from a run defense standpoint. You've got Notre Dame, very good running attack. They set up play action with Ian Book, who can get out of the pocket and throw the football. And then on, on the back end, the last game of the year, you're at Boston College with A.J. Dillon, who is an absolute NFL back. And I think when you look at the situation now, Syracuse, you know, I'm looking hopefully for those guys to split these last two games somehow, some way, find one more win. Nine and three at the end of the year would be remarkable. They'd be right around maybe 18, 19 in the country. And you're going to go to a major late December bowl, maybe the old champ sports bowl uh, in Florida and all the rest. I don't want the damn pinstripe bowl again. Syracuse has been there twice. They went there in the Big East. I want Syracuse to get into a different bowl 
go down into different recruiting territory, find different soil to kind of, uh, you know, plant some seeds in and, uh, and really get some eyeballs on you. And there's no better time uh, for recruits and college football fans and media and the like than the end of December to be in a bowl, right? I mean, let's be honest, because everybody is home for the holidays, eating food, Christmas cookies, pounding eggnog, getting hammered, and they're just watching college football all day long. So to me, that's that's a huge element for Syracuse. If they can get into one of those bigger bowls at the end uh, of December. In addition, I want to point something out here as we wrap up that is incredibly important for Syracuse football fans to realize if you haven't looked at the roster already. I, I mean, if you haven't combed over and seeing where, uh, you know, how, how old some of these players are on this team, I'm telling you, so many of these offensive weapons come back and so many guys on defense come back. I mean, are you kidding me? We have another three years of Taj Harris. And last night, again, Eric Dungy throwing those slant patterns right to the outside to Taj Harris, gets a quick block, and he has the, the jet speed to get even six yards at a time. He's a chunk yardage type guy. I love the hands. You've got another two years of Nikeem Johnson. You've got Howard at running back who had another very good game last night. He's just an absolute bull, north-south runner. He's back for several years. You've got Mo Neal back next year. And while you lose Eric Dungy, and what a warrior, and more on him in a minute, uh, while you lose him, you're simply inserting Tommy DeVito, the redshirt freshman who we've already seen this year when Dungy went out for a bit, uh, do some unbelievable things and, and, and throw the, the, the great passes against North Carolina. When you look at DeVito, I mean, this is a four-star guy who turned down a plethora of big-time schools to attend Syracuse University. It was senior night last night as well. Eric Dungy and crew going around the Carrier Dome, greeting fans, signing autographs, and all the rest was really a sight to behold. And look, Eric Dungy is going to go down as one of the great quarterbacks in Syracuse football history. I know that he has inflated stats compared to McNabb and Marvin Graves and Don McPherson and all these other quarterbacks, uh, Greg Paulus, Ryan Nassib. I know he has a lot of stats that are inflated based on the system that Dino Babers is running because let's be honest, they run it faster, they run more plays, so when you play a numbers game, you're going to get more yards. I understand that, but having said that, Eric Dungy's impact goes beyond numbers. It goes beyond stats for this football team. Eric Dungy's impact is going to be in the revitalization of this SU program. It's going to be in terms of 10, 15 years from now. We're going to look back at this era of SU football. We're going to look back even when they lost four in a row and five in a row in back-to-back -back years uh, in, in 2016, 17, respectively. We're going to still look back at this as 2018, I think, being the key year. Eric Dungy being a senior and this team finally getting to a pretty darn good bowl game and kind of resurrecting the Syracuse program. So I think that's really the major impact that he's going to have. Such a big character guy. You know he's going to promote the university and try to hustle and get kids to come here. Unbelievable, unbelievable character. Uh, great, great guy and a fantastic football player. Wishing all the best to Eric Dungy and crew. Still two games left, though, for Syracuse at Notre Dame and at Boston College. I'm Mike Lindsley here from the Burton Diner. Make sure you get here if you're in and around Central New York telling you, come for breakfast, come for lunch, try the patty melder, the Philly steak, or the Reuben for lunch, and the breakfast, of course, a plethora of different awesome menu items that you can try. Uh, I just had two scrambled eggs, bacon, and wheat toast, and it was absolutely delicious, so I'm off and running for the weekend. So get to the Burton Diner, the official diner of the ML Sports Platter. Hit me on Twitter, at Mike L Sports. You can also download my podcast, the ML Sports Platter, on Spotify, iTunes, and Google Podcasts. As I always tell you, enjoy the games.